Hey there, this is Chewy, captain of Team Tiki Combat Robotics, and uh, here in the Laney College shop. And um, a few people have asked uh, what was inside the mini fridge robot for the ro robot show. Where did it go? There's mini fridge. Um, people have asked what's inside mini fridge, what makes it run, and we're complaining that the TV show really didn't. Um, give them a good look inside any of the robots. So my plan is to give a little quick tour of the mini fridge and then begin its destruction recycling into the next robot. So let's take a quick look around the outside. So the mini fridge was a 220 pound competitive combat robot for the uh, fairly recent RoboGames 2011 event and it was basically a miniature refrigerator uh, on top of a robotic drive base and um, it had basically two parts it had the the drive module which contains the motors and the batteries and the receivers and tires and axles and all that stuff and then it had the part on top that I called the entertainment module uh, because it was essentially the fridge and the hammer and everything to drive the fridge and hammer like a gas bottle and solenoid valves and uh, all that fun stuff so um, yeah inside this is what's some damage from the obliterator match um, or last right did a fair number on the door and the internals of the robot so inside is uh, the door just comes right off, and so you can see some truss work that was done to reinforce the fridge. The fridge was basically gutted, uh, getting rid of all the foam and plastic, so it had to be reinforced with some some structural steel. Um, but at the same time, we were fighting weight, so there wasn't a whole lot of uh, you know couldn't use some one-inch plate in here. It had to be pretty small stuff. Um, this right here is a gearbox from a wheelchair, and this was the uh, hack we had to do after Last Rites blew up our pneumatic cylinder that used to make the hammer swing. Um, wheelchair gearbox, we ran it at 36 volts. Uh, it seemed like it was pretty fast, but not very durable. You can see there was a shaft right there that on the first hit, it just snapped, snapped the whole hammer clean, clean off. Just uh, that's the, the hit in the hammerhead right there. Deformed pretty good, but just tore that off. Went flying, uh, made the other team quite happy. So uh, glad I could oblige with that. Um, so yeah, the built drive base first, uh, then stuck the entertainment module and used up all the rest of the weight. It ended up about uh, 45, 50 pounds. It's on a piece of plywood here, and it was just held on with four of these, like, crazy grade something bolts on these little nylon spacers. And uh, let me get the top off, and uh, you can see what's inside. There we go. Okay, so I'll see if I can get a good overview there. So inside, it's it's the uh, bare basics of robot tree robotude. But uh, let's see. Started uh, making the frame rails. This is two by four, 14 gauge steel, I believe. Um, uh, everything's running on a three-quarter inch drive shaft keyed from Surplus Center. I think all the driveline stuff was from Surplus Center. Uh, but I uh, started making these cutouts in the steel so that we could get the chain in there and do the servicing and the spacing for the sprockets and whatnot. 
Um, so yeah, it's a three quarter inch keyed axle shaft. There's a chain that runs from front to back, slaving the wheels. Uh, yeah, big shaft collars, keeping everything on there. Uh, 10 inch wheels, four inch rims, go-kart hubs. You can see some damage again from the obliterator. Um, took some chunks out of the wheel too. I don't know if these are still usable, but the uh, the big groove there, inch inch deep groove, was for the uh, tracks that we ran in the first match that were purely for show, and um, it was completely intentional that those were gonna fall off. But uh, yeah, uh, just for show, it, it looked good. Uh, main power plant for the mini fridge is a pair of surplus wheelchair motors. They're uh, very similar to the NPC R81 and R82s. Uh, I'm pretty sure the motors are made by Stature Electric. Four pole, uh, 24 volt, like horse, horse, horse and a half, horse point two each, with uh, 22 or so to one gearbox reduction. Um, these are just kind of mounted in there in a cradle with some foam or some rubber so they've got a little flex. Um, coming off of that is a Lovejoy flexible coupling and a little red, uh, red thing in there is rubbery and gives some compliance so that the uh, axle shaft gets bent like this one's kind of bent. Um, it's not going to chew up the gearbox taking care of that uh, with the misalignment. And you can see that one's opened up a little more. But uh, yeah, so those work great for keeping the motors safe. Uh, this one did open up in the last rights fight, just pushed that way, and we lost this side of the drive. Um, so we put an extra shaft collar in there, kind of space it out. Um, let's see, yeah, you can see the chains in there. Uh, Batteries for this robot was, uh, they're inside these boxes, they're really quite quite nice, they're about four and a half pounds each, this is 20, 20 cells, uh, A1, 2, 3, M1s, uh, best, best cell, they seem to be really well matched for combat robots, um, it ran about uh, 33 volts, uh, 10 cells, 3.3 each, uh, we call it 36 volts just to make the math easy. Um, had about 10 amp hours. Um, we barely used any of that in any of our matches, so uh, this is probably a little bit over battery, but nothing wrong with that. Uh, we had two, two battery modules, 40 cells total, um, one inch, a half inch of foam padding on all sides. Um, beautiful TIG welding. Ooh. Uh, did quite well. Probably going to keep those for the next robot. Um, for speed controller, we were running a Robotech, and that's uh, where to go. There it is, AX2550, and the company rates that at 120 amps. And I don't know where they get that number from. I don't trust it or believe it anymore. Um, this, this controller was not up to the task of driving these motors um, with a high reduction. So I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure it's not up to the task of driving mag motors. But, um, I'm not sure, it's probably about right for middleweight. Um, it didn't seem to do real well on this heavy because it's not real fast, yet it still failed. Uh, the motors were geared very conservatively, yet the speed controller still failed. So, um, have to find something else. The uh, AX2550HE, or high efficiency, has uh, twice as many FETs. This is two FETs per leg. The HE is four FETs per leg, which is uh, much better. Um, strangely enough, they only rate it at 140 amps, 20 amps over this guy. Uh, so, their numbers are pretty um, speculative, I'll say. Um, yeah, so that's basically the, uh, the grand overview of the robot that was Minifridge.
The drive base took some damage down here. That's the last rights hit. There's a, oh look, you can see right inside. There's a big hole. Thanks, Ray. Let's see, down the tunnel. It's like Indiana Jones. Or not. Um, yeah, so there's a little bit of damage there. We got a few um, few dents and scrapes, like uh, well, there's a big hole there. That's a bladerator. Uh, oh, that's the one I like. That actually got in through the aluminum and bent the unistrut that was holding the battery and or motor. Motor. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a pretty cool hit. I like that one. Uh, didn't didn't touch anything important. Came real close though. Um, there's that. Uh, oh, the wedge mount was completely insufficient. But that's what happens when you make it on like Friday morning uh, in 20 minutes. Oh, and this wheel is a little bit uh, wonky. I think the technical term is. Um, there, there's a. Uh, Another little obliterator dent. If you turn this around, you can see it actually deformed quite a bit of the rim. So the uh, axle, I'm pretty sure, is bent, which is good because the axle's cheaper than a new rim. So uh, easy to replace, too. Um, so yeah, all in all, it's uh, still a solid robot base, and I would like to figure out how to give it, give it new life as the new drive base for the next robot, uh, which we're working on, I'm not sure what we're gonna call it, we're gonna try and tentatively named Wacky Flailing Armbot, or Flailbot, but I think someone's already taken that. So we'll have to find a better name for it and um, get some more use out of this stuff, or it goes in the big bin down there that goes to the recycler, which is certainly not the best option in my opinion. So yes, uh, tune in again, track the progress, come cheer for us at the Combots Cup 6, where we will all fight for robotic glory or be recycled. Oot!